Hello and welcome to Blender. I'll assume you've got this downloaded already and if you haven't just do a Google search for it and download Blender for your operating system of choice. You'll see this splash screen over here so just click anywhere and you're now in Blender. This is going to be a fairly quick overview of some of the more basic movement and navigation options and I'll sort of teach you more as we get along with the course. Uh, for now you don't have to follow me, I'm just going to enable something that actually lets me show you what's going on on my screen, screencast keys, reset, turn it on, now let me test that and see. Okay, so in the bottom left of the screen, you can see whatever it is I'm doing. So on to the basics. You have your mouse cursor here, and your middle mouse button, if you hold it in and you move around, that rotates the camera. Similarly, if you hold shift and your middle mouse button and you start moving it around, that pans the view instead. And if you scroll up and down, that's going to zoom in and zoom out. So using a combination of these things, you can sort of move things around and get a view of the object you're looking at. If you don't have a middle mouse button, sorry, don't be worried. In the top right of the screen here, you've got a little sort of panning option. You can click anywhere here and sort of rotate around and you'll get the same rotating function. Press on a magnifying glass and move up or down and you've got the zooming in. Uh, hold in on the sort of the hand icon and then you've got the tilting as well. Whoops, we've flown about. So that's the basic sort of moving option. And if you have a keypad, there are a few shortcuts, you, sorry, not a keypad, a numpad, there's a few shortcuts you're probably gonna to wanna to use. It's numpad one, three, and seven. Now that corresponds with sort of the little X, Y, and Z axis you see here. Now in Blender and in a lot of sort of 3D modeling software, we sort of need to know what the axis of something is so we can tell you what's in the front, what's in the back, that sort of thing. So the green line that you see here, that's your Y, like the top right here. Blue is, uh, sorry, red is the X, and blue, which you don't see, is the Z, which sort of goes up and down. And if you want, I can just enable it here so that it's easier to see. At any point in time, you can click in one of these things here, click the X, click the Y, click the Z. And in the top left here, you're sort of getting a autographic view of the, the, the object instead. And we'll get into what autographic is in a second. So if I click here, you'll see back autographic. If I click the same icon again, it takes me to the front. Similarly for left, right, up and down. And the three numpad keys I mentioned earlier, um, one, three, and seven, does the same thing as well. It brings you into these orthographic views. Me personally, I'm using a laptop, so I don't have a numpad, but I do bind it to my mouse as a shortcut. So what is an orthographic view, you're probably gonna ask. If you click your object, you'll see it's highlighted with a um, yellow sort of outline now and you press tab this gets you into edit mode now edit mode is where you make all the different edits for your object and you don't have to follow me now yet i'm just going to give you a quick demonstration of what autographic is if i try to sort of align my camera just to the front of this cube no matter how i do it you're going to see the front the outline of the front and the outline of the back because that's just how perspective works if you look at the grid as well the lines are sort of going in towards a a vanishing point in the end. This, you know, that's how our eyes work. If you look out into the road or the horizon ahead of you, you're going to see the same thing as well. In an autographic view, it's just a single square. So there's still a back, there's still a side and everything, but everything is, you're just pretending as if this sort of perspective doesn't exist. So an autographic view is very useful when you're sort of doing modeling because it eliminates the uh, parallax options that you're going to get when you're sort of trying to model things by eye. Okay, back to all our movement options. So if you select the cube, you've got a yellow outline. There's a few shortcut keys you're gonna know. G for grab. If you press G, you can move your cube all around. Uh, right click and it sort of resets the option if you don't select it. If you press G and left click, you sort of move it around. Whereas G, if you right click, it means you, uh, well, you don't, you don't choose that selection. You can, and you can press Control Z at any time to sort of undo a selection as you'd expect. So G for grab, S to scale, it changes the scale of an object, making it bigger or smaller. And lastly, R to rotate the object. Now, say for example, you are working on a project and you've moved the project around, you've rotated it, you've scaled it, and everything's gone wrong. And in fact, it's gone off the screen and you can't even find it anymore. So that's where the alternate key comes in. Remember, we've got G, S, and R. If you press alternate G instead, it resets the grab, moving it back to the center. Alternate S resets the scale. Alternate R resets the rotation. 
So you've got grab, scale, rotate, and the alternate key, in addition to that, sort of resets that option for the object that you've selected. And lastly, another important one, anything that you select, if you press X, you can then choose to delete it. So let's bring the cube back. Now, when you're actually doing an editing, um, what you want to do is you select the object. In the top left here, you'll see object mode. So that's where you sort of select your object, move things around, that sort of thing. If you press tab, you then go into edit mode. This is where you see what the object is actually made of. Now I'm going to zoom in, so mouse wheel for that. And you'll see over here an orange dot. If you try and click it, it turns white. That is known as a vertex. So a vertex is a dot. And the building, the basic building blocks is going to be, if you take two vertices and you join them together, you get this, which is an edge. If you take three or more vertices and you join them together to make any polygonal shape, you have this, which is a face. So a vertex um, forms an edge, which forms a face. And in Blender, you can choose between selecting these three things. And the way you do that is either up here, where you can choose between vertex, edge, or face select, or just use the numbers one, two, or three. So one for vertex, two for edge, three for face. Now, why is this important? Well, the same three keys you used earlier can be used here as well. So let's say, for example, I select, press one, select this vertex. If I press G for grab, I can now start grab well, grabbing and moving this vertex. Left click to select. I'll press 2 to select the edge. I can rotate this edge. Press 3 for face select and I can press S to scale this object. Yeah, so there you go. You can do it in object mode, you can do it in edit mode. Now for the sake of accuracy, let's say for example you want to grab this object and just slide it towards left or right. Um, but you know, if you no matter how precise you try to do it with your mouse, depending on your view, it's probably going to go up or down. It's going to move towards the back. It's not going to be very precise. So one thing we can do is, is using the different axes. Remember, green for Y, red for X, and blue for Z. So if I press G to grab my object, and I then press X, the red line is now highlighted, and I can only move my object on the X axis. If I press Y, it's the Y axis, Z is the Z axis. And this works for all the other sort of um, transformation attributes as well. So if I want to scale my object and I want to make it both longer and wider, but not taller, um, I can press S and X and it'll just scale it on the X axis. I can press X and Y and it'll just scale it on the Y axis. And well, there you go. I'm going to delete this cube and bring a new one in because it's starting to look a bit weird. An alternative to that is an exclusion. So say I want to grab this object and I want to move it around the floor here, pretend there's a floor around here, but without moving it up and down. It'd be a bit cumbersome if I'm going to press G, X, move it here, G, Y, move it back, and you know, G, X, move it in. And every time I want to move it around, it's X, Y, X, Y. It gets a bit cumbersome. So an alternative to that is press G to grab and press shift Z. So what it's telling Blender now is, I want it to move it on the X axis and the Y axis, but not the Z axis. So even if I try to go up and down, it's, it's not gonna move on the Z axis at all. You can still use shift X or shift Y, and you know, you're basically locking out one axis. So that's a very quick tutorial on the movement. And lastly, there are the preview modes. Right now, everything looks a bit gray and blocky and it doesn't look very fun, but this is known as solid mode, so everything looks solid. If you press Z on your keyboard just once, you can choose between solid, material preview, wireframe, and rendered. We'll very quickly go through all four. Solid is probably going to be where you do a lot of your modeling, so this is where everything just looks a bit blocky. The look can be changed, but we won't go through that now. If you press Z and move down, this is material preview. So if you assign the material to your object, I'll do it now very quickly. You don't have to follow me. We'll go through this next time. It's just an example. Say red, your cube is now red. So you see, if you go back to solid mode, it's still going to be gray, but in material mode, it shows you the material of choice. You've got wireframe view, which gives you just the outline of the object. Very useful if you're trying to look through things or see if there's anything inside the object. And lastly, there's rendered view. Rendered is what the object is actually going to look like if you were to print an image or something like that. So you'll start seeing light being casted here, shadow here, 
So in Material, you've got the texture, but without all the added detail, and rendered, this is what the object's actually going to look like. But for most of the time, you're probably going to do things in solid view, and I'll show you more of it as we go along. The final thing to show you in Blender is over on the right here. So this is where you navigate some of the different options. And over here, you've got some things that's called Render Properties, which looks like the back of a camera. If you click that, you've got a choice of three render engines. That's EV, Workbench, and Cycles. I can just tell you now, just ignore Workbench. Um, you're not going to use it at all. It's just between EV and Cycles. EV is sort of Blender's built-in proprietary engine. It's very quick. You can do everything, and it's real-time. You know, you can add shadows and lights, and everything's real-time. Whereas Cycles, you don't see a difference if you change it to Cycles here. But if I go to Rendered View, everything starts looking a little grainy. Let's try and add something that is a bit more noticeable. So to get to that menu, we press X to delete the cubed. Shift A opens this menu where you can add things. We'll go to Mesh, Monkey. And here you've got Monkey. So press G to grab Z to move it up. And we will rotate the monkey on the z-axis so it faces us here. So Cycles looks very grainy. What's going on? If you look in the top left here, you'll see path tracing samples. Now Cycles is the most accurate render engine. It's trying to approximate what light is going to be like as it bounces off the different objects and then it bounces back and forth. So it takes a lot of GPU power. Um, if you have a powerful GPU, like a good RTX, I don't know, 3 series or something, you can go to device, change it to GPU, and that's going to be a little faster than using CPU compute. Um, you can also go down here to denoising, click the down arrow, and for the viewport, change it to Optic X, and you'll see the image sort of clarifies itself a little bit faster. But no matter how fast it is, it's always going to be a bit slower than EV, which is all real time. So what you could do as a Blender artist is do all your modeling in EV, even if you want the end product to be done in cycles, so it looks a bit more realistic. And, you know, every now and then you just switch to cycles to see what it looks like, but then you switch back to EV when you're making a little bit of changes, just so you don't bog things down. Having said that, um, Blender is always adding lots of new add-ons and features to EV, and hopefully at some point it can be as accurate as cycles while being just as fast, well, being as fast as it is now. And that's about it. That's a quick overview of the movement and navigation options in Blender. Just move things around and I'll upload the next video soon where we actually will start building stuff.